Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So some of you are probably gonna comment like you've worn the same hoodie over and over and over again. I know, I'm aware of that. I've, well on the day of filming this, I'm packing to leave back to London. So I've literally packed all my clothes and I just left out my travel stuff, which happens to consist of this hoodie. So you're probably gonna see a couple videos back to back of me wearing the same thing, but that's okay. Cause it's not a fashion channel. It is a business channel. And today I'm gonna be speaking about how to Corona proof your business. Now, another thought you might be having is, well, Natasha, it is July and this all happened towards the start of the year. So why are you bringing this up like four months too late? And I agree with you. I am a little bit late to this and I don't have any excuses, but I was sat down today and I was like trying to come up with different ideas. And I thought I haven't posted anything about how coronavirus has impacted, I guess the digital space, um, I have a little bit in some content that I post on LinkedIn, but nothing on my YouTube channel. So I wanted to bring you some tips, some ways that you can make sure that your business can still thrive through coronavirus and the impact it is having on the landscape at the moment and how you can come out the other side stronger than ever. And a lot of businesses have been impacted more so than others. Um, in my space, coronavirus has kind of been a good thing because I've had more strategy sessions, more inbound, than ever of people needing to adapt and be able to have a digital strategy in place, which has been a good thing for me. But I understand that a lot of people aren't in that position or that situation. So I wanted to name a couple of things that I've been doing and that I think I've seen other people doing, which are working pretty well. So let's jump in with number one, which is content. So I have been doing this as well. And this applies to everyone, like no matter what the situation in the current, um, economy, this is always going to be relevant, but now so more than ever is upping the frequency and the quality and the value of your content. Because with so many people working from home or so many places outside, which are still shutting, like a lot of places are starting to reopen slowly, but it's still not exactly the same as it was before. People are spending more time online than ever before. So people are scrolling through their phones, their iPads, their MacBooks, their laptops, their desktops, whatever it is, people are online more than they ever have been before. Like I think people's screen times have probably like tripled if not quadrupled. Like I know my screen time has increased dramatically around like bar the time that I was doing the, the digital detox. So I'm probably gonna go back to that because it's really quite harmful and quite scary. But increasing the type of content that you're posting. So the quality, the value, so many things are being given away for free now. So the competition is harsher than ever, to be honest. If you wanna stand out from the crowd, you need to make sure that you're posting content which is highly valuable and is better than what the other people are posting in your significant niche or space. And the frequency, because people are online, they're looking for good content. So hopefully you can be a source of that for them. The second thing is to learn something new. So with all this time on our hands, what could we do? We could watch Tiger King, we could watch TV, we could scroll through TikTok, we could learn a new dance, or we could learn a skill which is gonna make us money and help us grow in the future. And I mean, obviously some people are monetizing from TikTok, so I'm not kicking that. But um, in terms of learning a new skill, I mean doing something that is gonna benefit your business. So for example, or just actually a passion project, like learning a new language or reading new books. I did something like, what I've been learning is kind of, like I learned how to handstand. Like I know it's so random, um, but I learned how to handstand and then I took an NLP course, which kind of relates to, it kind of ties in with some of the coaching that I do, um, which helps. Um, but it's just mainly an interest for me. And then handstand is relating to fitness. So I know that if I'm doing handstands, it's probably because I've done a workout and it's just working on my fitness overall. So it's something to work towards, a little challenge to have, something that is gonna motivate and inspire you to kind of get into the frame of learning and not going into a stagnant place where you're not working, you're not leaving the house, you're not doing anything. So what can you do? Learn a new skill. Um, if this relates to business, this could be something like, for example, if you've been doing a lot of inbound, so I'll use myself as, a, as an example, all of my lead flow over the past few months has been inbound from content that I'm posting and people just finding out about me. So searching for someone on LinkedIn, so it's like YouTube stuff, content, all that stuff. 
is how I've been getting leads. So I was like, okay, let me try and learn a new skill. So I invested in a sales program. So I've been upping my sales skills. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is learn about Facebook ads because I run a couple ads. I have some retargeting ads set up, but I don't fully understand it. Like I get the basics of ads, but I wanna learn more. So after I've done the sales stuff, that's my current project at the moment. After I've done that, then I'll go on to Facebook ads. So that's like learning a new skill or improving something that could benefit your business and make you way more money. Creating systems that are gonna carve more time for you. So by systems, this could be automation sequences. So it could be automation that you're using with LinkedIn. It could be email automation that you're using to have like, for example, if you have a video sales letter, like a VSL funnel, and then you have um, email follow-ups that are all automated using Active Campaign. That stuff is gonna save you a lot of manual time following up with people that have been added to a specific list or that have watched one of your videos. So setting up automations in that respect or automating the communication between you and your team if you're an agency owner or even if you have a VA. So if you have a VA or somebody that helps you or assists you in your business, how can you optimize that workflow or that communication, whether it's unit using Asana or Trello boards or whatever you're doing, optimizing that process so that you can spend more time working on your business instead of in it. The fourth thing isn't for an immediate benefit, but it's more so about building Valuable relationships, so networking in the correct way, reaching out to other entrepreneurs, seeing how they're doing, if you guys can have a partnership or collaborate in any way. Or it could even just be that people that are reaching out to you for help now, who are usually your ideal prospects, but maybe at the moment they don't have the finances or they're not in the position to invest in your services. If you're the one who is helping them out and being the shoulder for them to lean on and you can kind of support them through this time, then who do you think the first person they're gonna to go to is going to be when this is all over or when they are in the position to buy? Because I've had this so many times, well, either with my agency or with the consulting side of things, that I've had a conversation with somebody who isn't at that moment ready to buy. I've been like, hey, look, here's access to my free course, or I've given them a worksheet from my paid clients and been like, go and do this as homework, and then when you're in the correct position to be able to move forward with something else, you've got your first couple clients, you've got the money, then reach back out to me. The amount of times I've had somebody then reach out, whether it's two months, six months, a year, sometimes two years later, it always pays off in the long run. So try and build meaningful relationships. Don't just look for what's going to be beneficial to me and lucrative to me straight away. Invest in the long-term side of things with your business as well as the short-term. And when I say invest, that takes me on to the last point, which is investments. Now, I don't know that much about this yet, so I'm not gonna start telling you guys exactly what to do, but what I will do is I'm going to leave a link in the description to a video which gave me basically all of these ideas. So I'm basically following this video. It's by a YouTuber called Graham Stephan. He's awesome. I've literally been binge watching his content. So it's like a mini <laughs> shout out for him right now. Um, but he mentions opening a high interest savings account, investing in a Roth IRA, index funds, all of that stuff. So I'll leave the link to his video, which covers, I think it's like 10, different ways of investing that you can do in 2020. So I'll leave that down below. Um, but investing is the next thing. It's also just, as I mentioned before, like think about the short term, you obviously need to make money now to survive and cover your basic needs. But when it comes to long term, if you can be that person who doesn't immediately spend everything that they make, which has been me a lot of the times, um, but if you can think about what you can do now to make your money multiply and grow in the long run, then you're gonna be a lot better off and you're gonna be able to build wealth, not just get rich quick and spend it all at once. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys found this useful. As always, smash the like button if you did enjoy it as it does really help me get out my content to more and more people who might benefit from it. Let me know what you thought down in the comments down below and I will see you in the next one.